Good day, Grade 12 learners of South Africa. Welcome to Life Sciences with Mindset. Today we're going to work through plant hormones, or basically how plants respond to the environment. And yes, plants do have hormones, not just us human beings and going through adolescence and teenagers and hormones and all imbalances and all the rest of it. Plants cannot have a hormonal imbalance. So today we're going to look at how plants respond to their environment and clearly they need hormones. So let's have a look. We start off with first of all our first slide and then we move on to our next one. First of all, we have why do we have hormones? Why do plants have hormones? Well, first of all, they have it for growth. Okay, so it's to increase the size of a plant. Cell division clearly takes place, just like with us, and that is followed by cell differentiation. So the cells will differentiate. They, they first they grow, they just regular little cells, and there they are, and now they have to decide, well, am I going to um, be a, a xylem cell or a phloem cell or epithelium cell? What cell am I going to be? Factors that will affect growth and development are, first of all, internal factors, people, and those internal factors are going to be the hormones that float around in that little plant. And then we also have external stimuli. Now think about it, those, the external stimuli will be things like water. Have you ever seen a plant growing um, where there, when it doesn't get watered? Um, look at plants that grow in the desert versus plants that grow in your garden at home. Um, very, very different. Or if you're living in Durban um, and or along the coast, think of the wonderful plant growth that you have there. No one bothers to water it because the air is moist, the ground is moist. So plants will respond to water. Water would be an external stimulus. You've got light. All plants want light. They must have light. Why? For photosynthesis. And if they don't have photosynthesis, plants can't make food, so they must have the light. Gravity, roots will grow towards the ground. They grow into the ground. They grow towards gravity, but away from light. And then gases, plants need carbon dioxide, and they also need oxygen. And if there isn't enough carbon dioxide, they can't photosynthesize, so they must have carbon dioxide. And they need oxygen for normal cellular respiration to take place. And then, of course, contact. Now, all you have to do is think about ivy, for example. As ivy grows up, it sticks to the wall. Why? It's contact. Um, the vines of grapes, you know, grape vines, um, you have the contact and then you get those little spiral tendril things that sort of grow around things to hold the plants up. Um, morning glory, same kind of thing. And I mean, they grow a lot in the wild. So all of that, you've got contact, you've got water, you've got light, you've got gravity and you've got gases. And remember, without water and the gases, the plant cannot photosynthesize. All right, so all of this now makes quite a lot of sense and we move on to the external stimuli will cause something called a tropism. All right, and what is a tropism? It simply means to turn. So the plant will turn towards light. It will grow towards gravity and water. Um, it needs the gases around it. So do, do me a favor, go and find a pot plant in your house. Okay, if you don't have a pot plant, then make one. Take your pot plant and stick it in the kitchen window. And you will see after about a week, the plant will turn towards the light. Then take the plant a week later and turn it so that it faces away from the light. And I promise you now within about a week, it will have turned, the whole plant will have turned towards light again. And to make sure no one's playing tricks on you, mark an A and a B on the opposite sides of your pot. And you'll see plants will turn, the leaves will always turn towards light. All right, so tropism means to turn. And people, this is very, very important. You must know that. Now, a stimulus will affect the direction 
that the plant grows and develops in. Now, a positive tropism means that it will grow towards that stimulus. And if it's negative, well, people think about it. If it is positive, it will grow towards. It's positive. It wants that. If it's negative, you move away from. Okay, so plants are exactly the same. If it's a positive stimulus, it moves towards that stimulus. If it is a negative stimulus, it will move away from it. So, for example, roots grow down. They move away from light. So they are negatively phototrophic, which means light, but positively geotrophic, which means they grow towards gravity. Whereas your stems grow upwards. So if they're growing upwards, they, are, they will respond positively to light, but negatively to gravity. So positive means towards, negative means away. Now, hormone action in plants. What on earth is this all about? Well, guess what? This is very important. You must know this. Plant cells produce things called hormones. Now, we've already spoken about hormones, and hormones are chemical messengers. Now, people, a messenger, if your mom sends you to the person next door, her friend next door, and she gives you a message to go and tell the lady next door, okay, you are the messenger. You never do the job. You are taking a message. And the same with a hormone. And you must understand this for this section and the following section where we are going to deal with animals and their responses to the environment. Okay? A hormone is a chemical messenger in plants and in animals. And what a hormone does is it will respond to a stimulus and it will then go to a target organ and, or cell. And it will say, listen, please will you do this? Okay, so if your mother wants the lady next door to bake a chocolate cake, your mom says to you, listen, hun, please will you go next door to Mrs. So-and-so and -so and ask her to please bake a chocolate cake for me. All right, so what do you do? You go next door and you tell the lady next door to bake a chocolate cake. Who bakes the chocolate cake? the lady next door. She is the target organ or the target cell. You would be the chemical messenger. In other words, you would be the hormone. All right. Now, exactly the same thing in our bodies as well as in a plant's body. What do we have? We've got the hormones, which are chemical messengers. And what do they do? They travel throughout the plant causing, you see that, causing other cells called target cells to respond. So the hormone, you, the messenger, goes next door to the lady, the target cell, and you ask her to do a job. That job would be making the chocolate cake. You don't bake the chocolate cake. The lady next door does. All right. Now, in plants, hormones, con uh, hormones control the following. Let's just move our screen down. They will control growth and development. In other words, to grow bigger and to develop. Okay, and they will have responses to the environment. And that's where our tropisms come in because it will be to turn towards. Now, if we look at this picture here, okay, what have we got? We've got this little plant growing and it's got flowers. So you'll have movement of the hormones into the flower, okay, to tell it to develop. The same here to the little bud. The target cells will be the bud cells. And the hormone will then tell it, listen, hun, you need to now start opening up and developing so that reproduction can take place in this case. Now, hormones, uh, hormonal control in plants, the most important hormone you must know is auxins. You've got to know these little things. Okay? Auxins. And what do they do? They are growth hormones. Now, Tell me something. If you think logically about it, I mean, I don't expect you to get all excited about plants, but how do plants grow? Or wh what's the purpose of a plant? We want it to grow and to develop, either to make the garden look pretty or for fruit trees to grow and develop and grow in to make produce fruit so that we can eat or vegetables. I mean, if you plant a whole bunch of carrot seeds, you want those plants to grow because the bigger the plant is on the outside or the top part that you can see, the leaves, 
the better they'll photosynthesize. And if they're photosynthesizing well, guess what? They make plenty of food that, that gets stored in the carrot, which is, or the root, which is what we eat. So we want plants to grow and develop because they provide us with nutrients. They provide us with food. All right, so a high concentration of auxins in an area will stimulate cell elongation and then clearly cell differentiation, which means the cells become specialized, will develop, resulting in apical dominance. Now, the apical bud is what you're going to find at the very tip of a stem. So your apical bud will sit here. And where's your growing point? That there, that is your growing point. It's the tip of the stem. That's the growing point. That is your apical bud. And what do we want? We want the plant to grow upwards. And when it grows upwards, we call that apical dominance. It dominates over the side branches. Okay, now, when the plant grows upwards and the apical bud dominates, that action of the apical dominance will inhibit, in other words, it will hold, it will stop, it will inhibit the lateral branches from growing. Why? We want the plant to grow up. We want it to grow high and tall. Okay. All the plant's energy, okay, and all the nutrients it makes, all its energy will be placed into a process of growing taller and upwards. All right? So that's how they get, are going to grow higher and taller because of apical dominance, the tip of the stem growing up. Now, the, if the tip is removed, in other words, we cut that tip, okay, the auxiliary buds develop into lateral branches. In other words, if a plant is growing upwards like this and we cut that tip off, we cut the apical bud off, we now no longer have dominance, which means that those little branches that develop on the side, those little tips there, are going to grow sideways, which means that your hedge or your bush is growing to, going to grow sideways and thicker because you've cut off the top. So it will now start to grow thicker sideways and it'll get thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker and that's how you make a hedge grow is by trimming the top of it all the time and you trim the sides this way so it can only grow one way all the energy goes into growing sideways all right that's how we make a hedge grow all right now people if i was asking you a question in the exams i would ask you something about apical dominance and i would ask you about how i could get my hedge to grow nice and thick Waha, remove the tips so that the branches develop on the sides. <coughs> now, what do auxins cause? They cause cell division, okay, because we've clearly established that. They cause the formation of adventitious roots in cuttings. So when we have a cutting and we stick it in a glass of water and the little roots start to grow, those are the adventitious roots that grow, okay? The development of flowers and fruit and also it causes abscission. Ab now listen to the word abscission. Think of abscission as scissors. You know scissors? The things that you use to cut with. This pen is messing me around. Scissors. Now scission, abscission. You are cutting. So it is the breaking off of leaves and fruit. And then natural weed killers. Now this is something interesting. Your natural weed killers are artificially produced auxins. So they are artificial. Okay? And how do they work? They use to kill the weeds without polluting the soil or the environment. They're non-toxic to animals and humans. And they are biodegradable. How do they work? They literally cause the plant to die. Okay? They cause the leaves to break off. And if the leaves break off, can the plant photosynthesize? No. Can it produce food? No. Can it grow and develop? No. So that's what natural weed killers are. And I think it's very clever. And in very often, 
what they've or what they've done and this is biotechnology is they've produced weed killers very specific to specific weeds so they've got hormones that work only on specific weeds so you can take a weed killer and you can spray it on your lawn and it will only kill the weeds that grow between your grass so very very clever all right this is an example of what we have and how we prove that apical dominance occurs. If you look at this plant, what they did was is they covered the tip with plain lanolin, which is like a thick vas it, it's like a form of vaseline. It, it's something that will inhibit, it will stop it. Okay? The minute you stop that tip from growing, what are you going to end up with? You end up with your auxiliary, which means sides or extras. Your auxiliary buds grow into side branches. You see that? So there they've grown into side branches. Here, we put auxins in the lanolin. So we've cut the tip off, but we put auxins in there. Here there are no auxins. Here there are auxins. And what happens? The auxins cause the tip to grow. And the auxiliary buds here on the side remain dormant. They don't develop. Okay. That shows apical dominance it's to prove apical dominance that it is in the tip where the auxins are and that's where the growth will happen so they've cut the tip off here and put lanolin and the little lateral bran auxiliary branches grow here they've put auxins in the lanolin after cutting the tip off and the auxins will then stop these auxiliary buds from growing and the plant will grow higher here it grows sideways. Other plant hormones include, now you need to know these, gibberellins. Your most important one is auxins. But gibberellins, and what do they cause? They cause elongation of the internodes. Now if you remember from grade 9, you've got your plant and then you've got those little nodes on the stem. And it's from the node that your branches or your side leaves etc will grow depending on what kind of plant it is okay those will be your nodes and the space in between is your internode okay so that's your internodes in stems and the developing of flowers the sprouting of buds so the little buds that grow and germination of seeds so without gibberellins if that seed doesn't get, uh, uh, or the seed can get as much um, a, a nice warm warmth and darkness and water and everything to make it grow. If there aren't any gibberellins, that little seed's not going to germinate. All right, so gibberellins are very important to us as human beings and also animals. We then have abscisic acid. It inhibits the growth of apical buds. Okay, That's, now look at it, abscisic acid for apical buds and seeds and also the roots. It regulates the abscission, which is the breaking off of the leaves, and plays a role in the opening and closing mechanism of the stomata. Now you've studied the stomata, okay, and you understand how the stomata open and close. Well, its abscisic acid has, plays a role. And just remember, if you remember nothing else, remember that abscisic acid inhibits the growth in the apical buds and it regulates the abscission of leaves, in other words, the breaking off of the leaves. And then cytokinins, now that actually sounds like a lovely word, cytokinins, sounds like they're very keen. They stimulate cell division in the meristematic tissue. Now what is meristematic tissue, people? It is your growth tissue. Okay, in the meristematic tissue and um, determine the cell differentiation in newly formed cells. So the cytokinins are going to work with the auxins. They promote growth of the lateral buds, which is on the sides, and into branches, and they delay the aging process in leaves and plants. If your mom, um, if you buy, it's, it, okay, if you buy your mom flowers, all right, or chaps when you buy your girlfriend's flowers, Certain shops that you buy flowers from, when they're all sort of done up, they'll have a little packet 
um, which is contains like a gel type of fluid and if you mix that into the vase water it keeps that plant going the, those flowers looking beautiful for two three weeks now what they've got in that gel fluid is cytokinins why because it stops the aging process of the leaves which means the plants and the flowers look beautiful for much longer all right phototropism now what happens here Look, photo means light. Tropism means to turn. Okay, so phototropism is the growth movement in a plant when it is stimulated by light. And people, you must know this. So, phototropism is the growth movement in a plant when it is stimulated by light. Now, when the stem of a plant grows towards a one-sided, now they're not going to use one-sided in an exam, okay? Because you are grade 12s, you are supposed to know words. So I put one-sided here so that you remember. But one-sided means unilateral. Uni means one and lateral means from the side. So one-sided would be a unilateral light stimulus. It is positively phototrophic. So they're saying that when you've got this plant and it's getting light only from one side, it's going to grow towards that light. And if you remember, right in the beginning, I said to you, get yourself a pot plant and put it in the kitchen window. And it will grow towards the light. The leaves will turn towards the light. Wait a week and then turn the plant around. So the leaves are all facing you and you will see that if there's light only coming from one side, the leaves will turn towards the window again. How does it work? Well, very easy. Auxins, remember I said auxins were very important, always move towards the dark side. Now in a normal tip, your auxins are sp spread around here across it in the middle. Why? Because the sun will rise here and then the sun moves and it moves and it moves and then the sun will set and then we'll have night. So all around the tip it's going to get sunlight. Okay. Auxins sit all the way around here at the tip but when we only have light from one side, so there isn't all of this light, okay? That light's not there. We're only getting light from one side. Then it's unilateral and the auxins are not going to be here in the middle. Where are they going to be? They're going to only collect on the dark side. And no, it's not Star Wars, okay? So here we go. All the little auxins collect on the shaded side, not the light side. Only the shaded side. And what do they do? If we have a higher concentration of auxins on the dark side, it causes cell elongation. So we're going to have more cell elongation this side. So if all these cells are getting longer and longer and longer and longer and longer, look what happens it will now start to grow towards the light. So the stem bends towards the light stimulus. Why? Because it's growing towards the light, we say stems are positively phototrophic. They are positive, so it, they will grow towards the light. Always towards the light. Why? Auxins will go to the dark side here and they will cause these cells to get longer. But these cells stay the same size. And if they stay the same size and these get longer, it will push it over towards the light. Why do plants need light? For photosynthesis. Okay, you've got to remember that. The whole thing about phototropism or, or, or um, auxins and phototropism and this whole process of tropisms and growth movements is that plants must follow light and they must grow towards the gravity, the roots. Why? Because that's where the water is. All right. Roots, however, 
never grow up. Where do they grow? They grow down. So they are negatively phototrophic. Why? They grow away. So if it's positive, it is towards. Negative is away. So they'll grow away from light down into the soil. Here is a, a, a diagram which I took from um, the world, a, a teaching, a, a world of teaching. They had this slide there. Okay, so what have we got? We've got this light. Now remember, this is not just a normal light. It's not the light bulbs you have in your house. This is a proper infrared sort of type light, ultraviolet infrared, proper sunlight bulb. And what have we done here? Well, there's our little plant. And we have auxins have collected all on the dark side, on the shaded side, because this is where the light is. So the auxins have collected on the darker side. And what have they done? They've caused the cells to get longer. And as these cells get longer, the little tip grows towards the light. Okay, this is just a whole lot of, of growth processes. This is what happens. This is what we do to the tip. And this is how they will grow. So if we take the tip and we cover it, okay, so we're covering where the auxins are here. We're covering that. So it's not getting any light. The tip, it's still going to grow upwards. All right. Now, if this tip is cut and we put light on the side, guess what? It stops growing. If with the tip, we have this little tip and we cut it, and then we place, the, um, place it on top of the, a layer of gelatin. Now remember, gelatin, you're not going to, um, it, it doesn't seal it. The gelatin allows the auxins to move backwards and forwards. So if the light comes from one side, the auxins will then move here to the shaded side and the plant will grow sideways. If the auxin solution is placed at the tip of the stem where the tip is being cut off, so we cut the tip off and then we put a whole glob of auxin there and we have light from the side, guess what? We've got auxins, so it will grow to the side. Okay, here we have our little growing tip and we cut it and we only put half of it on the stem. What are we going to have? We're still going to have auxins. So the auxins will still be present. We've got light coming from one side. The plant is going to grow sideways. The growing tip is cut off completely. It's going to stop growing. If no treatment and we still have the sideways light stimulus, the plant will grow sideways. The growing tip is cut off and we put light here. Guess what? We're going to end up with it just stopping to grow. So those are all the different types of things you could do in an experiment and that have been done in previous experiments to show that the growth area of a plant is at the tip. In other words, apical dominance. That little tip dominates. The apparatus to demonstrate phototropism. People, you must know this experiment. Okay? You've got to know this experiment. So now I'm going to move my slide down so that you can actually see the whole thing. We take this healthy, wonderful, beautiful two pot plants, okay? They must be identical and you put them in a box. And the box has a little hole, only one little hole in the side. And you put your unilateral light source so that it goes into this box. Now, what we've also got is a thing called a clinostat. I'm going to write it big here. A clino stat. And a clinostat is an apparatus which we use for phototropism or to show any kind of growth movement. And there's a way to remember this. If the clinostat is stationary, it is the experiment. In other words, the clinostat just sits there. Because remember, you've got to set your two experiments up identically because the one is a control and the one is the experiment. So what do we do? In our experiment, we want to show that a plant will grow towards light. So we have this black box, we have a hole, and we have the clinostat is stationary. It just sits there. And the plant is therefore only getting light from one side. So the plant will grow towards light. In the control, you've got your clinostat, and your clinostat moves. Now what happens is the clinostat's got like a, a ticker timer on it. And the plant sits here, and it goes chick, 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 chick. 
and it turns slowly. So it goes clips, 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 clips. And as it turns, it means that the whole plant tip is getting some light because it moves it round and round and round. Now remember the light source is here, so it's going chip, 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 chip. And all the sides of the plant are getting light, the same amount of light, not just from one side. Because the clinostat is moving. And if it moves, it is the control. If it is stationary, it is the experiment. So remember the sexperiment. So it becomes, if it is stationary, it is the experiment. And they will ask this in an exam. You will get it in an exam. All right, here we go to a question. The experiment below shows how shoots, these are new little shoots, in other words, little things just coming out of the soil respond to light. Two shoots were used, both belonging to the same species of plant. Now think, why would they use the same species of plant? So that their results are more accurate. Okay? The shoots were observed after a few days. So here, let's have a look at them. Here we've got shoot one. And there's the procedure. You've got this little shoot and there's a unilateral light stimulus. The tip of the shoot is covered with tinfoil. So we've put tinfoil all across the top there. Um, see, the, the, the seedling then is illuminated from the right. So here is the light source. Okay. In shoot B or with shoot B, the procedure was the sides of the shoot are covered with tinfoil. Okay. And the shoot is illuminated. So here we've put tinfoil across the top. And here we've put tinfoil all around the bottom. But we've left the tip exposed. Okay. And look. It grows towards the light. All right. Now we knew that was going to happen anyway. So question one. What is the aim of this experiment? Now remember. What are we doing? We are demonstrating phototropism. But specifically what are we demonstrating? So we say here. The aim of this experiment is always to, so it is to demonstrate apical dominance. Okay, apical dominance. In other words, that tip in, the, in, in shoot A, the tip is covered and the plant doesn't bend. But when we cover the bottom and the sides, what happens? The little tip is exposed. That's where the auxins are. The plant is going to grow towards the light. That's what shows apical dominance because the tip was covered and then the tip was exposed. Give the results of this experiment. Now, what we do is we say in shoot A, what happened? The tip, or the stem rather, the stem grows upwards okay and for shoot B what happened when the little tip was exposed okay the stem bends um, you can say bends to the side bends towards the light or to be properly correct the light source okay so it bends towards the light source. Now, name the hormone responsible for the growth of the plant as shown by shoot B in the diagram. People, I don't even want to think that you don't know the answer here. It is auxins. And name three other plant hormones that will play a role in the growth and development of a plant. Okay, now remember the first one is like, it sounds like it comes from um, uh, what is the one that they had, the Lord of the Rings? I mean, think of Lord of the Rings. You, most of you would have seen the movie, Lord of the Rings. You've got little things called, and they, these sound like little goblins. They are gibberellins. So that's easy to remember, gibberellins. Just think of Lord of the Rings, okay? You've got gibberellins. You've got that thing that sounds like something that's a sickness. So you've got ab, s, sick, acid. Remember that causes abscission of leaves, breaking off of leaves. Okay. Um, you've got cyto, 
Kinnons. Okay. Um, you could also add something. Um, another one that you could also add is indol acetic acid. Okay. That's IAA. I mean, there are a whole bunch that you could name, but that you know we've gone through gibberellins, abscisic acid, and cytokinins. All right, now geotropism. Now think of it. Geo is gravity. Tropism to turn. Okay, so geotropism, and you must know this, is the downward growth movement of a root in response to a unilateral gravitational force. In other words, gravity is pulling it downwards. Okay, one way, down. Now, how does it work? When a shoot is placed horizontally, in other words, you take a pot plant and you turn it onto its side, we will expect the stem to curve upwards because it's growing, it's, it's got to grow towards light, okay? And remember, if the light's from the top, it's going to be shaded on the bottom, so the auxins will go there to the shaded side, to the dark side. Remember the dark side. So the auxins go to the dark side and cause cell elongation for the tip to grow upwards. The roots are going to move this way. Now they were lying horizontally, but what happens now? The roots are going to grow downwards. Why? Gravity is there, not that way. So, when this pot plant is turned onto its side, abscisic acid now plays a role. Okay, it's a plant hormone and it's drawn to the lower half of the root by the force of gravity. It's pulled there. And the high abscisic acid concentration inhibits, inhibits or stops the root growth. So, what have we got? We've got this plant on its side. The stem is going to grow up because of auxins and the roots grow down. Why? Because your abscisic acid is going to sit here and the abscisic acid is going to stop the cells from elongating. So those will carry on growing normally and these are going to be inhibited. So the roots grow downwards. Cell elongation takes place faster in the upper half and as the cells in the upper half of the root grow more rapidly, what happens? The root is going to turn downwards. So in other words, people, please, roots are positively geotrophic. In other words, they grow towards gravity and stems are negatively geotrophic. Why? Because they grow away from gravity. Here's a diagram. Apparatus to demonstrate geotropism in roots and stems or the effect of geotropism in roots and stems. We've got our control and our experiment. Now, Experiment will always have the stationary clinostat. So think of it as the sex experiment, stationary clinostat. It stays still. So no matter how we've taken these seeds and pinned them onto this clinostat, the roots will grow down and the stems will grow up. You see, stems are growing up. Let's get another color here, pink, and the roots are growing down. No matter how those little seedlings were, were pinned on there. But in the control, what do we have? We've got the revolving clinostat. So this thing goes tick, 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 and it goes around and around so that those little seeds never know where gravity is. They don't know where gravity is. So as they were pinned, the roots are now going to grow in the direction that they were pinned. And what does that tell you? It tells you that if the plant doesn't know where gravity is, because the clinostat keeps moving around, it's revolving, it's going to just grow. So in other words, gravity will cause the roots to grow down and the stems that are negatively geotrophic are going to grow up. Other tropisms, let me just get my blue color back. Other tropisms, we've got, now remember water was an external stimulus, Hydro is water. So hydrotropism, roots will grow towards water. Roots are therefore positively hydrotrophic. Chemotropism, chemo is chemical. <coughs> 
So this is growth reaction to chemical agents. Okay, I've just lost my blue color. And stereotropism or thigmotropism, I like thigmotropism, but they, they mean the same thing. So you can either use stereotropism or thigmotropism, that's growth reaction to contact with solid bodies. Like, for example, we spoke earlier about ivy and how ivy, as it touches a wall surface, it will now start to adhere to the wall so that it can grow up along the wall. And you normally find it's with plants that have a very weak stem. All right, what type of tropism is shown in these pictures? Now, let's see if you can look at this and tell me. Okay, what do we have here? I mean, if you look at this one here, what's happening? You've got the roots growing downwards, no matter how that little seed is placed. So this is going to be geotropism. Okay, and here, what have we got? We've got all these tiny little seedlings, and where are they growing towards? They're growing towards the light stimulus. Okay, so if they are growing towards the light, they're going to be positively phototrophic. So this is phototropism. All right. Ah, and here's our plant that's sitting in the kitchen window. Where is it growing towards? It's growing towards the light. So this is going to be, come on, I know you know this, phototropism. Okay. And what's this? This here is a Venus fly trap. So along comes a little fly, and the little fly sits here. And what happens? The Venus flytrap closes. Why did it close? Because there was physical contact. And if there's physical contact, it's stereotropism or thigmotropism. Okay, thigmotropism, stereotropism, it's contact. And the last one here, we've got our little plant and it's in this rocky area and the little stem grows and then the next thing a little stem starts growing upwards. So what happened? It is phototropism. Okay, it's growing away from gravity. So negatively geotrophic, positively phototrophic. Okay, question two. Study the diagram below and answer the questions that follow in your workbook. Here, remember we spoke about this plant and we take our little pot plant and for some other reason the dog knocks it over or the cat knocks it over and the little plant is now sitting on its side. So as it's sitting on its side, what's going to happen after a while? The little stem is going to grow upwards. Why? Stems are positively phototrophic and the little roots in here that you can't see because there's a pot, where are they going to grow? They're going to grow downwards. All right, so question two. The pot in the diagram below was placed onto its side. After a day, the stem started to grow upwards, but you actually need about a week. But anyway, clearly in this experiment, they only needed a day. Give the term used to describe this phenomenon. Now, look at what it says here. After a day, the stem started to grow upwards. So they are asking about the stem growing upwards towards light. Therefore, that phenomenon would be phototropism. All right. And it says, provide a definition for this term. So what is phototropism? It is the growth movement of a plant, okay, um, when stimulated by light. Okay, remember light is an external stimulus. So it's the growth movement of a plant when stimulated by light. Okay, then for question 2.3. What is the advantage of the pot plant growing in that direction? 
Now think about it. What is the advantage? It is going to plant, will grow towards light for optimum um, sunlight energy or radiant energy um, causing pho photosyn the cis to take place. Okay. And if there isn't light, photosynthesis can't take place. And people remember, if photosynthesis doesn't take place, a plant has no food. It can't make food. Remember, plants are autotrophic. They make their own food. So they need sunlight, they need water, and they need carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And if they've got those three ingredients, plants can make as much food as they need. All right. Now, name the substance that has influenced the growth in that direction. Now, what substance do you think they're talking about here? They're talking about plant hormones. So that substance would be specifically auxins. Okay. Auxins or the plant hormone. All right. Now, what is meant by the term apical dominance? And I'm not going to write this. Remember, apical dominance means that the tip of a plant will always grow upwards. And while that tip is growing upwards, it inhibits the lateral branches from growing sideways. Okay, remember that. Apical dominance is for the stem to grow upwards. The apical bud grows upwards and it inhibits the lateral buds from forming. If a black curtain is placed over the pot plant, would the pot plant continue to grow in the same direction? Explain your answer. Now remember, we're going to take this little plant, okay, we're taking our little pot plant, which has now started to grow upwards, okay, and by having it grow upwards, what's going to happen? Because remember, it's on that little block thing, okay, what's going to happen? Now, we, it's going to grow upwards, we know this, because of auxins. Now we take a big black, I don't know, curtain, and we chuck it over this plant. So therefore, there is no light. Okay? If there is no light stimulus, what's going to happen? Think about it. There's no light stimulus. This little plant is going to continue to grow in that same direction. Okay? So it will continue... Oi. Continue to grow upwards. Okay? And inhibit, because it's going to continue to grow upwards, and therefore it's going to continue to inhibit the development of auxiliary buds. And those auxiliary buds are going to then cause the lateral branches to occur. Okay, so there you go. Just think of, if you cover it, there's no light. It's going to continue to grow in the direction it was growing because there is no light stimulus. So you're going to have cell elong cells elongating on both sides. It's going to grow upwards. But if a plant is put into a cupboard or a dark place or a black curtain thrown over it, there is no light. It takes two to three days for that plant to lose its starch. Now remember, starch is stored glucose from photosynthesis. And after a week, or three, four, five days, what's going to happen? The plant's leaves will start to lose chlorophyll. And then the plant will eventually die. So you take a plant and stick it in the cupboard, it will die after a week or two. Okay. And if you leave it in there for a week, it's going to look awful. Just think about when um, we leave things lying on the grass outside. And after two or three or four days, you go and you pick up the brick or the mat or whatever it is that you left on the grass. And the grass is all like yellowy and creamy color. Why? It's lost its chlorophyll. And when that happens, eventually the plant will die. It needs to make food, remember? Okay, plant defense mechanisms. Um, 
Now, wh why do we have plant defense mechanisms? We want to stop animals from, the plants want to stop the animals from eating them. So, I mean, think of the bush, bush felt. You've got all these beautiful plants. You've got plenty of animals, okay? Um, and what do they do? Well, your buck are going to go and they're going to eat everything. They'll clean everything out. So what do plants do? They have defense mechanisms to make sure that the herbivores don't eat them or don't eat them excessively to a point where they don't have enough leaves to be able to photosynthesize. So what do plants do? They have chemical defenses. And how do they have, what, what are these chemical uh, defenses? Well, the chemical defenses, the plants produce chemicals called phyto idosteroids, which is a horrible word, but best you just, I mean, you don't have to know this word. I put it in so that you understand, but it's, they produce chemicals. Phyto steroids to defend against plant eating insects. Okay. Now, if we think of cultivated tobacco plants produce nicotine and that stops insects from eating them. Now, a little um, indigenous knowledge, uh, I guess we can call it. It was passed on from my granny and she got it from her granny. It was in the days long before fancy insecticides and pesticides. The best way to stop those little Christmas beetles from eating your roses. Here's a hint. Now you can go and check if your granny knows this and if she, or if your mother knows this and if she doesn't, you can tell her because now you have some indigenous knowledge. Okay, passed on from a granny to a granny, a granny to a granddaughter to a granddaughter. Okay. What we've got, you take a, a, a half a liter of water, you add a teaspoon of dishwasher into there, okay? And you take a, a cigarette. Generally, it was quite a strong cigarette or just a, a teaspoon of tobacco, you know, pipe tobacco, and you chuck it into this, this mixture and you mix it and then mix it. The reason you have the dishwasher is it helps to adhere to the leaves. And what are you getting in that tobacco? nicotine and you take that you put it through a strainer and you put it in a spray bottle and you go and spray your roses and it stops the Christmas beetles from eating them okay so there is some indigenous knowledge and what are we using we're using the nicotine from the tobacco leaves all right it makes it bitter and then the leaves of the mapani trees contain high levels of tannins giving the leaves a characteristic if you if you rub um, mapani leaves and, and the people in the Limpopo province will be able to tell you this. They've always got mapani leaves there and, and also high up in Mapomalanga. <coughs> and you take those mapani leaves and you rub them. It honestly smells like you've rubbed turpentine on your hands. You know the stuff that you clean paint with? Yeah, it smells just like that. But yet we've got mapani worms that love eating mapani trees. So, but it keeps all the other animals from eating the mapani, tree, uh, uh, mapani trees. So they've only got the worms to contend with. All right, so wonderful how nature is. So there's an example of what Mapani leaves look like. They always remind me of butterflies because they've got that sort of shape. So they look like little butterflies, very pretty leaves. Okay, here we've got an example of what tobacco leaves look like. Now, if, I'd, if you didn't know any better, you'd think it was some kind of um, marrow or pumpkin leaf, but it's not, they are tobacco leaves. And you think of how much effort and, and issues tobacco leaves causes. Right, now, part of the defense mechanisms as well are thorns. Now, thorns is a sort of an overall umbrella name. And it's a common term used for any sharp thing that sticks out of a plant. Okay, and it's there to protect the plants. So the structure also prevents excessive water loss. Because instead of having this big, beautiful leaf, you've got this thick, this, this, this um, prickly thing thorn that sticks out. So not only is it a defense mechanism, but it's also a way of preventing excess water loss. So we get three types of what is classified under the common name of thorns, and you'll see the actual thorn thorn word here, but we'll start off with prickles. And your prickles are modified extensions of the cortex and the epidermis of a plant that shape into a sharp needle-like structure. Okay. And for example, you've got your little rose bushes. So there's your beautiful rose uh, stem, and then you have this thing that sticks there, and they are prickles, and they prick quite sore, and you can actually often get some blood on your finger from doing that. Okay, thorns are modified branches of stems, 
um, that form hard, pointed, and sharp ends that can pierce the skin of the herbivores. Examples are your acacia trees. Those are vicious thorns that they have. Um, your kai apples, your lemon trees. And here, you've got this thing that looks like that. And my gosh, they prick very, very sore. And very often, they've got so much dirt and nonsense on the tip that you end up with, with it becoming infected. It doesn't really get, very often get infected with rose bushes, um, but those thorns from an acacia tree, and, and especially a lemon tree, oh my gosh, you really get quite infected. And then, clearly spines, spines is easy, they are um, leaves that have cylindrically shaped, hard and sharp points, for example, your aloes and your cacti. So those are those really hard prickly things. Okay, so here's an example of thorns that you'll find on a lemon tree. You see, it's this tip here that's horrible because it picks up all kinds of rubbish on the end there. So when you do prick yourself, it will cause infection, skin infection, just to get rid of all the messy rubbish that was in there. Then here are the spines on an aloe. You see the little spines here? Okay. And then here are the prickles and the prickles of a rose bush. And I mean, these look absolutely uh, uh, nasty, nasty, nasty. So people, um, that's it for today. And well, I hope you've learned something. Remember, auxins are plant hormones. Plant hormones will move from one area to another area in a plant. Why? Because hormones are chemical messengers and they will cause the target organ, which in this case, auxins would be, it, it, the target organ would be the cells, and auxins will always move to the dark side, my son. They move to the dark side, and they cause the cells to elongate, which causes the tip to grow towards light. If anything, any part of a plant grows towards the stimulus, it's positive. If it grows away from the stimulus, it's negative. So stems are positively phototrophic. They grow towards light. Roots are negatively phototrophic. They grow away from light. Stems are negatively geotrophic. They grow away from gravity. And roots are positively geotrophic. They grow towards gravity. And remember your experiments? Go through them, make sure you remember that a stationary clinostat is this experiment. And the control would be the revolving clinostat. All right. And there you go. Have a wonderful time studying. Enjoy your studying. Don't sit there like a little zombie and not enjoy it because if that's the case, you're never going to learn anything. Read your work through, understand it. And if you understand it, I promise you learning will be a piece of cake. So there we go. Have a wonderful time and a good one. Cheers.